Okay, so right now we're going to do the orthographic prediction of this angled block, uh, which requires us to do the first thing we do when we do instrumental drawing, which is align our page to the T-square. Lean over your T-square, put your head right here, leaning over, look to see if this line is precisely matching the line of your T-square when it's plugged in. Mine is already. The second thing you do when you do instrumental drawing is put your name in the title block in beautiful capital graphics letters. Make sure each letter is touching the top line. Make sure each letter is touching the bottom line so they are all of equal X height. Make sure that it's your name and not somebody else's name. Okay. And then the third thing we do when we do instrumental drawing is read the instruction. In essence, these instructions say we're going to do the plan view, the front elevation view, and the end elevation view of this angled block. The plan view goes here. The front elevation view goes here. The side elevation view goes here. So let's first do the crates. That's step number one. And we're going to start with these helpful starting points. So, put your T-square through these starting points and produce a line that's light, light, light as can be, so light you can barely see all the way through the front elevation, the reference line, and the side elevation. Again, we want to do that to the bottom of the plan view all the way across and through to this 45 degree line that you may not be able to see on the screen but you'll see on your page using your set square produce a line all the way through the top of this um, starting at this starting point through the turning plane line through the next starting point and all the way up and again for the side elevation which should join up very precisely to that line there. Okay. Second step is to do uh, the outside crate. So we want the full length of this. And we'll start with the front elevation. So looking at this way, what measurement do we get? We get 60 plus 60. That's 120. So put zero on your starting point and look across to 120 and put the tiniest little mark on 120, not 110, not 119. Not 121, not 130, but 120, a tiniest little mark, half the size of an ant's head. And through that mark, place your set square on the T-square and draw a line all the way up. Now what is the height of this angled block? we need to do some calculations. We've got 35 plus 25, which is 60. Yes, it is 60. Um, just had to do a little bit of calculation in my head there on the fly. So let's put our set square on the T square, the zero on this bottom line, and measure up 60. Put a tiniest little dot, half the size of an ant's head, and then through that dot, look over the T-square, angle your pencil in towards the T-square, and draw a line all the way across. We have the crate for our front elevation. And half the crate for our plan already, half the, plan, um, the crate for our side elevation. So what we need now is the final measurement, which is the depth measurement of this angled block. So we have 45 and 20, which happens to be 65. 
So we'll measure on this plan, putting the zero on the line of the plan, and 45 plus 20 is 65 indeed. And through that mark, a line all the way across, we'll have to extend this 45 degree line a little. So we know that when it touches that 45 degree line, it comes straight down. And now we have the crate for the plan and the crate or outside bounding box for the side elevation. Step number three is to start on the inside details. So let us begin. We have 60 here and 60 there. So halfway of 120 is 60. Put the tiniest little dot. And that dot will need to be produced all the way up. And we have, uh, starting with the main elevation or front elevation, because that's where the main details or the most detail information is given to us, we have this little block coming out the side and it is 35 millimeters high. Let's make a measurement. That is 35 millimeters above that ground line and pull that line all the way across over the turning plane line and into the side elevation. We have this little part of the uh, bottom flat part on the front surface of the front elevation and we see that it's 15 high so let's pull that make that measurement zero on that ground line a dot half the size of an ant's head 15 above that and pull that line all the way across now we're going to put in the circles later. So um, I think now we have all the information we need for the front elevation apart from the circle. Uh, let's think about the plan view. So we've got this fl uh, flat surface on the top of the plan at the back. So let's put that in from the top at the top of the plan at the back, let's make a mark 20 millimeters down and take that line all the way across to this 45 degree line and bring it all the way down. So it runs across, pings down, is reflected straight down to there. And indeed, this is 22, so uh, 20 as well. So we'll go all the way down. What that means is we have all the details we need to produce the shape, all apart from the circle borehole, which is right in the center there, which we'll do momentarily. For now, I know this looks like a lot of guidelines and it's a little bit confusing to see how it comes together but it's all going to come together very very soon in fact right now when we start with our presentation lines you'll recall a presentation line is black bold and beautiful um, what that means is you press firmly onto the page with your sharp 2h pencil you'll notice that I'm starting at the top and doing all the horizontal lines. So I'm not going back and forward, back and forward, smudging in my pencil lines into the page, keeping that page crisp and clean. The 
is this line here. And this line. And now we'll do the uh, vertical lines. And we're not going to go back and forward like this, smudging that pencil across the page. Uh, we are going to orientate the set square that way so the bulk of the set square is not going to uh, be uh, smudging our lines. Now this is one of those rare times where we don't put the set square on the T-square. Those who are bright will have seen that this here is not a square and therefore this here is not a 45 degree line. Um, it's close to a 45 degree line but you'll notice that the set square is coming off the T-square here at the bottom of the drawing. So um, that angle line we have, and in this view, it's angled away from us, and in this view, it's angled much more like this. The surface here is la angled like that. The surface here is angled like that, which we can see very clearly because we have the side view. Um, now we've done the shape here in the front elevation, in the plan and the side elevation and we would be complete were it not for the circle going through this part of the angled block. So let's measure where that circle goes. It looks like it's centered and we don't have any measurements saying that it's not centered. So we're going to find the center of this part here, which we may measure. Half of 60 is 30. Or we may go corner to corner, very lightly with guidelines, corner to corner. That's where our center will be. With a compass, it says here that this borehole through the angled block is a diameter of 26. And so, um, we need the radius or half of the diameter. So put the pointy end on the zero and the pencil end on the Thirteen. Is that right? Half of twenty six is thirteen, yes. And there we can put the pointy end on the middle, which we found, and we can draw that twenty six diameter bore hole. Now, each circle, when we're in orthographic mode, uh, desires to have center lines. So we'll put in our center lines here. Center lines 
uh, lines indicating areas of symmetry and they should be with a short line, a gap and a long line. About like that. So I guess you might say it looks a little bit like uh, the scope of a gun. So we're going to do our center lines here. And when we do orthographic, we don't just see with our ordinary eyes, we see with our Superman X-ray vision, which means that we're seeing through the solid of this part and finding in between there the edges of this borehole we call these the hidden lines. And hidden lines are dashed lines. So I've put them in here a little bit roughly, not measured, uh, which I probably should measure them. Um, four millimeter dashes with two millimeter gaps. But I just estimated them for the sake of time. And of course, we need the hole in this view too, so there's the hidden line for the edge of the borehole. And we need the center line. Like so. So there we have our finished and complete third angle orthographic projection for this angled block. Well done.